Thank you. Thank you for coming out. I'm Marv. This is him. This is Michael. We're old friends. Michael and I first met in college just a few years back. And we met him in 91 here at Woodstock. We, Michael and I ended up in Vermont. Him came back to Vermont. And so we're, we're old friends. In fact, we've been old friends so long that now we are old. <laughs> How old, Marv? Really old. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, <laughs> that reminds me of a, uh, I'm sure everybody in this audience knows the Simon Garfunkel song, Old Friends. Yeah, you know, there's the verse that goes, can you imagine us years from today sharing a park bench quietly? How terribly strange to be 70. <laughs> I'm 70. I'm 69. And I, I, I'm 71. <clears throat> and strange. Yeah, terribly, terribly, terribly strange. strange. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's another song called Old Friends. Probably some of you know it. You guys, Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim, yeah, friends. Know. Do you know that one, Mark? I don't know. I it's from. Sing it. No. <laughs> I prefer to sing show tunes only in the shower. In the shower? <laughs> you like to sing in the shower? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we have, have one. <laughs> we got a shower right here. No. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. No, nobody will see you. We won't listen. No. no. Just go ahead and take a shower. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel better now. Yep. I might be able to get out of here. Hot water's on the right here. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Michael. I always uh, have trouble in other people's showers because they never figure out how anything works. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> okay, here we go. And it goes something like this kind of hum la da 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 uh, okay, I'm gonna try the words now. Uh, say, um, we're old friends and we, uh, we're old friends and we will stay old friends. But of course, that depends on how much longer we're here. Ah! <laughs> Play old friends, move every part that bends. Stay old friends. Sees every day that we're here. <laughs> we're old friends and we will stay old friends, but of course that depends on how much longer we're here. Play old friends, move every part that bends. Stay old friends, sees every day that is here. How about this one? Um, hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, yeah. My cataracts are back again. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember one. Yeah. It is the dawning of the age of forgetfulness. <laughs> age of forgetfulness. We get to use scripts because we're old. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, 
then before I forget, I have a song about getting old, and uh, <clears throat> it's called Getting Old. I grew up working on the family farm, all day putting hay into the barn. Today for an hour, I raked leaves and took a shower. Tonight, I can barely move my arm. Yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did, I don't. I used to say I would, but now I won't. Used to be so easy, my life so light and breezy. Now every little thing I do makes me groan. Do you know how to groan? Let me hear it. Oh, yeah. Let's do a couple. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Another one. Another one. One more. Oh, you are good groaners. Uh, I used to hike and bike and swim all day. Nothing ever get me in the way. Now the trek is to the mailbox. I wear compression socks. Lazy boy, where I wanna stay. Oh, well, I did, I did, I did, I did. I did, I did, I did. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I don't. It used to be so easy. My life so light and breezy. Now every little thing I do makes me grow. Let's hear it. Another one. One more. Oh. Give me two, four. Oh. Oh, all right. Getting old ain't like it used to be. When I was so young and fancy free. Old folks had their stories of all their former glories. But back then they were old. Not me. Well, I did, I did, I did, I did, I don't. Used to say I would, but now I won't. Used to be so easy, my life so light and breezy. Now I'm the old fart on the family tree. <laughs> well, as you can probably tell, we, we like humor. We like to play around. <clears throat> but aging, as many of us in the audience know, isn't always funny. It can be pretty serious. Uh, I was talking to my friend, Mia Brown, over, we're writing this show about aging. And I said, we're looking for a title. Do you have any ideas? I'm always fishing, you know? And, and she said, she thought just for a moment, she said, yeah, um, it's all fun and games until what happens to you. <laughs> and that's pretty funny, right? It's funny because it's true. It's not all fun and games when it happens to us. So we're going to do a little on the serious side mixed in. Uh, and also, play is a big theme in our gathering, in our workshops. And we often think of play as being silly, kids running around, being loud, kind of chaotic. But if you think about children in a sandbox, they're making roads, the little bulldozers, they're making deliveries with their toy trucks, they're landscaping, they're having family dynamics, right? It's serious. And when I write poetry, I play in much the same way. I put this image next to this one and see what happens. Now, ah, I'll move it down here. Oh, I'll add something here. I'll take it out. The next day, I'll put it back in. And I keep playing. It's created play until it feels finished. So I want to share a few of my recent poems now. They're not particularly about aging per se, but they're written by an aging poet <laughs> who is living in the times that we're all living in. First one's called Emerge. Ignoring the veils of thin places, we plotted our way toward imagined destinations swatting at black flies in unsettling doubts about motivations and duplicities. We confused maps with landscapes, endowed happenstance and muddled luck 
with divine synchronicity. It stepped away one, two, backbeat, when we could have been dancing to the syncopated joy of a drum, even when our hearts were broken, leaving our fears and our flags behind, we emerge from the tangle onto this grassy plain, blinking and squinting in the sunlight. This next one's called Migration. I walk out into the bay until little waves lap my chin, stand and lose myself in windless water and cloudless sky. I turn slow as sand through an hourglass, look back to the smudged line of beach. An undulating ribbon appears. I stand and wait and watch a line of butterflies approach, then pass so close that I see the light glowing through each orange and black wing. Thank you, well, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> uh, this next poem, I've got two more. One's an experimental, this next poem, Rain is an experimental poem. I arranged individual words in a spaced out grid. You'd have to see it to understand it. How do you read such a thing? Well, it's different every time I read it. Here it goes. Rain, breeze, glow, reflect, echo, murmur. Rain keeps coming down rain. Mist, rise, ripples, leaves, stir, breathe. Keeps coming down rain, keeps. Gust startles, leaves twist, return. Rain keeps coming down rain. And one more, mist. You are not sinking. The mist is rising. Allow yourself to float. Love will hold you. Now one way to tell a story uh, in the form of a play. Another way is uh, just to be a storyteller. And I would like to tell you a story that I heard growing up on a farm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, it goes like this, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, I grew up down in Lancaster County, and they say stuff like, throw the horse over the fence some hay. <laughs> And, and I throw Papa down the steps his hat. Why don't you want so ready? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 if it's just raining a little bit, they say it's spritzing. And then if it comes down, they say, oh, it's awful ugly outside. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. I didn't come here to talk to you about the weather, even though I am pretty good at it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you know, I, the only reason I bought a telephone was so I could call up my mom and say, is it spritzing over there or is it ugly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it comes in handy, though. I'm glad I got one. But no, I want to tell you the story when Grandpa went hunting. He liked to go hunt deer hunt. Anybody here go deer hunt? <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that do up here in Vermont. I, I, I didn't do it either. But, down there, my grandpa, he liked to go hunting, and he, he, there were a lot of deer around Lancaster County, because that's good, good growing fields, you know? We got corn there, and a lot of deer around there. But my grandpa and his friends decided, why, why don't we go try and go hunting somewhere else once? Why not? So they went to West Virginia. All the way down to West Virginia, they went to go hunting one time, and they get up early in the morning, and they go out there, and before they get to the place where they're going to go, 
what they see up there in the field was a deer right there. So they stop, get out of the car, and they say, Grandpa, you're driving now. You get the first shot. So Grandpa, he gets the gun out. Bang. Right down. So they go up there in the field and weren't they in for a big surprise. That wasn't no deer Grandpa shot. It was a bull. <laughs> well, they looked at it, they thought, well, now what are we going to do? They thought, well, this bull's laying here in the field. It's got to go with some, some, some farm around here. And they looked and they, they saw a barn in the field, another field in the house. And they thought, well, that must be the house that goes along with this bull. We better go down and talk to the farmer. So they go down and knock on the door. And the uh, farmer opens up the door and he says, hello. Mm -hmm. Grandpa says, hello. He said, we're down here hunting from Pennsylvania. And we're, we're all farmers. And we saw that bull up there in the field. Now, that's a mighty fine bull. We could use a bull like that. And we're wondering if we could buy it from you. <laughs> well, that farmer said, man, it's a pretty fine bull. Now, that bull ain't for sale. And my grandpa said, well, I figured as much. But, you know, if, if he was for sale, <laughs> how much would you want to sell? And that farmer said, well, I think I'd probably have to have pretty near a hundred and a half for that bull. And grandpa said, I'll give you 200 right now, cash on the barrel head. <laughs> so he, he took out the money and he gave it to him, said, there you go, deal. Then grandpa looked at him and said, well, now I, I, got, I got a question for you. Yeah, we saw you had a skitter out there behind the barn. And I was wondering if we could borrow that skitter for just about a half hour. And we'll bring it back. We'll be right there. And he said, well, sure. Yeah, you can do that. Well, what do you want the skitter for? He said, well, I, I had mind we, we'd bring the bull down out of the field on that skitter. And he said, well, I thought you guys were farmers. That, that bull ain't going to stand on no skitter. Grandpa said, no, I know that. I think we're going to get him to lay down. <laughs> he said, he ain't going to lay down on that skitter neither. And my grandpa said, well, I, 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 I reckon he will because he's dead. <laughs> and that guy said, what, my bull is dead? What happened to him? He said, well, I shot him. <laughs> and the farmer said, you shot my bull? And grandpa said, no, I shot my bull. <laughs> Pointed at that money right in his hand. <laughs> oh, that was my grandpa. I thought he was an awful campaigner. I was kind of scared when I was growing up I was going to be like him. And then I heard somewhere it skips a generation. So I ain't worried about that no more. And that's my story of grandpa gone hunting. <laughs> You got a story? Hang on. Oh, do I have a story? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this down over here, which I was supposed to do before. <clears throat> so, uh, you know that in a former life, I was an actor for a while. And I lived in New York. Has anybody seen the other bottle of wine? <laughs> The stool came from the children's room. It's a little small. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I lived in New York for a while. And it got to the point where my, some of my friends were getting married or having kids or leaving the business. And some of them were moving to LA. And um, I had a friend who was an actor. Uh, and her husband was a playwright, a uh, screenwriter. And she contacted me. She said, I've just been cast in a show, that uh, a TV show that every episode is going to be filmed in a different European city. How terrible is that? <laughs> and uh, she said, would you consider coming out and house-sitting for us and taking care of our chocolate lab and cleaning our pool? And as I was uh, between engagements at the time, I thought that was a pretty good idea. And it was January through March, which are the best months in as far as I'm concerned. Everything was green. They lived in Echo Park. And uh, so I went out 
And my agent, who I was not signed with, but who sent me out for auditions in New York, had an office in LA, and I thought, well, this is great. I can meet the, um, I can meet the agents in the, in the LA office and maybe get sent out for a couple of auditions and, and you know, start to work in LA. And so the morning of the uh, interview, I spent all morning trying to figure out what to wear to look completely LA chic. And uh, I borrowed a friend of mine's cowboy boots. And uh, I drive with my Thomas guy, and I get, to the, I get to the office on Sunset Boulevard, and I go upstairs, and in the waiting room, and the, this woman comes out, and she says, they'll see you now. And she walks me, lets me into this room, and it's, a, uh, it's like an enlarged living room. And right here, to my left, was Martin Cage, who's the owner of the agency. And um, I had met him in New York at a, like, picnic in Central Park, and he looked up and he said, oh, hi, you hun. He said, I've just been to my brother's funeral. I can't get up, I'm sorry. And I said, okay. And uh, there were three other agents sitting at the far end of the room who he did not introduce me to. Um, but he spoke, motioned for me to sit down. And he motioned to me to this um, rather large, no brown naga hide, wing-back chair swivel with casters. And so I sat down on it to make myself comfortable, and the casters shot out from under me. And I ended up on, flat on my back with this ficus tree like, that I hit. And I couldn't get up. My cowboy boots are waving. And there was no effort, zero effort, from anybody else in the room to come and get me. So I rolled over. And I got myself up and I sat back down and I said, well, that'll make a great chapter in my memoirs. <laughs> I'm sure they thought that I had set the whole thing up to make, you know, to make them remember me. And so the conversation went on for another couple of minutes and, uh, and I left. And uh, I thought, I went for a couple of auditions and I thought, I really don't like it out here. <laughs> and so I went back to New York for another year, and then I packed my bags and moved back to Vermont, which is where I always wanted to be. <laughs> Lucky for us. Lucky for us. So as Liza said, uh, one of the things I've done in my checkered past uh, is do poems, stories, creative writing, uh, with patients at Dartmouth Hitchcock. And one day I walked into the children's hospital and I saw that this young girl that I had done stories with in the past was back. She was a frequent flyer at the hospital. And uh, I chatted with her and I convinced her to try something new with me, which is a personal metaphor game. I called it a game, That's all we, that always helps. Uh, and she said, well, okay. And I took out my laptop and I said, so if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? She said, a monkey. Uh, no, a tiger. <laughs> then I typed tiger. And I said, okay, um, how about a plant? What plant would you be if you were a plant? And she said, poison ivy. <laughs> and I went through my list that I had spent a long time developing and fine-tuning. And I got down through and she had a quick answer to each one and I taped it up. And I was all set for the next step, which is to choose one and expand it. You know, I had this big plan. And it didn't happen because as soon as I got done, she could tell I was done, she reached under her blankets, pulled out her laptop, oh. opened it up, and she said, okay, your turn. <laughs> I said, okay. She said, now, if you were a breakfast cereal, what kind of breakfast cereal would you be? That was easy. I said, crunchy granola. <laughs> okay, next. If you were a coat, what kind of coat would you be? I said, that's easy, barn coat. 
and she takes the fire and kills him. She kept going. She had the mums out there. It was like a parody of what I was doing, but her personal metaphors were way more fun than mine. And I was having such a good time, and she was too. She was the teacher, and she just kept going, and then she kind of stopped, and she looked at me, and she said, okay, Mark, uh, I'm going to read over these, and then I'm going to tell you who you are. <laughs> and she looks, and she reads down through this mess of metaphors I'd just given her, and she said, are you ready? I said, yeah. And she looks at me, and she says, you are old, and you're old, and you're old, and you're always hungry. <laughs> like, how did she know that? <laughs> I just started cracking up. But I noticed, I heard these voices just as she was pronouncing this, who I was. And it was, a, I turned around, it was a very, very young looking doctor and an even younger looking nurse and they were scowling at this young patient and one of them said that's not nice <laughs> and the other one said you shouldn't call people old and I looked at them and I said huh, I like being old and someday you will understand that and I smiled and waved goodbye to my little friend and walked out the door. <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> Pea break, anyone? <laughs> Mark? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to read a poem by Robert Frost called "An Old Man's Winter Night." Uh, it's one of Frost's darker poems, uh, and in reading it and sort of trying to understand it, I was um, tossed back to when I was growing up in the South Woodstock. It was an old farmhouse, sort of near where I lived on a dirt road. It was right next to the road, and it had um, an, an older couple lived there. And then uh, the, the husband died, and the, the woman lived there by herself. And it was, um, the house had no paint on it. And it was, the windows were like just single, old, single pane, old windows. And I used to ride my horse by it or drive by it. And <clears throat> it always looked like they only lived in two rooms of the house. This is a cape. And uh, in the winter, when you went by, there was always frost in the windows. And you could tell that there was frost on the inside of the windows as well. And, um, Anyway, that made me think of this poem uh, in which an old man finds himself in a cold pantry in a dark house in the winter, and he returns to his chair by the wood stove in the kitchen. Mm. An old man's winter night. <clears throat> All out of doors looked darkly in at him through the thin frost, almost in separate stars that gathers on the pane in empty rooms. What kept his eyes from giving back the gaze was the lamp tilted near them in his hand. What kept him from remembering what it was that brought him into that creaking room was age. He stood with barrels round him at a loss, and having scared the cellar under him in clomping there, he scared it once again in clomping off, and scared the outer night, which has its sounds familiar, like the roar of trees and the crack of branches, common things 
but nothing so like beating on a box. A light he was to no one but himself, where now he sat concerned with he knew what, a quiet light, and then not even that. He consigned to the moon, such as she was, so late arising, to the broken moon, as better than the sun in any case for such a charge, his snow upon the roof, his icicles along the wall to keep, and slept. The log that shifted with a jolt once in the stove disturbed him, and he shifted, and eased his heavy breathing, but still slept. One aged man, one man can't keep a house, a farm, a countryside, or if he can, it's thus he does it of a winter's night. When I retired, I thought I would have less work, but it seems like I have more jobs all the time, like this one. I'm the maintenance man. I'm the maintenance man. I'm the maintenance man. Gotta do the maintenance while I can. I get up every morning, do Tai Chi, work on my back, <laughs> and stretch my knee, do what I can to stay in the game, cause it's my job to maintain, cause I'm the maintenance man, I'm the maintenance man. Man, gotta maintain. I'm a creature of habit. I can't change that much, but I try to stay in tune, even though I feel a little rough. Oh, I take small steps, work with what I've got. I have to maintain, and I better not stop. I can meditate, I can hang the gate, clear the table and wash my plate. Do all this and play banjo to it, I maintain. I keep singing to you. I'm the maintenance man. I'm the maintenance man. I'm the maintenance man. Gotta do the maintenance while you can. I'm the maintenance man. Pull the weeds, maintenance man. I only do what I need. Maintenance man, it's what I do. Maintenance man, you ought to try it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you another story from the hospital. I went in to use the staff bathroom one day and there was a whiteboard up in the wall and at the top somebody had written what's the funniest thing a patient ever said to you and it was just full of all these stories and luckily I didn't have any deadline of where I needed to go next I read every single one I loved them they were hilarious and but one really stuck with me and it was this the nurse wrote I went into my patient's room to introduce myself as her nurse for the day. She took one look at me and she said, I have underwear older than you. <laughs> and then she said, go fetch me a proper adult. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, when I told when I told my brother-in-law Randy Landis Ikesty that we were doing a show about getting old, he said, "Huh, I've been writing stories about getting old. Do you want some?" I said, "Yeah, send them all." He said, "Use anything you want." So he picked one that he's going to share with you now. Thanks to Randy Landis Ikesty. Mm. Uh, so, I'm sure everyone in this room is aware of the weird things that start happening to us as we age, to our bodies. In my case, it was a rather large area of irritated skin uh, near a certain part of my body, and it wouldn't heal. So, I went to my dermatologist, and he took one look at it, and he diagnosed it immediately, and he named it something with six syllables that I couldn't possibly pronounce. <laughs> and uh, he, he also recommended a, a, an over-the-counter medication for it. So um, I couldn't pronounce the name of the medication either, so I wrote it down on a piece of paper. And I left, and I went to the pharmacy, and I walked up to the counter, and I handed the piece of the paper to the pharmacist. And I said, I, I realize this is not a prescription, but if you could just point me in the direction of where I could find this medicine. And she looked at it, and she smiled, and she said, oh, clotrimazone. And I said, oh, OK. And she said, that will be on aisle five. So I was heading to aisle five, and she called out, it's about halfway down next to the hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, this is great. Now everyone in the store knows of my affliction. And I got to aisle five, and I started down to aisle five. And she heard her voice again saying, it says jock itch on the box. <laughs> and if you get to the condoms, you've gone too far. <laughs> I lowered my head and exited the store rapidly. Yeah. So, what are the workshops we're going to be doing? Well, two workshops. We're kind of rolling. Oh. What's coming up next? Uh, we have a storytelling workshop. We also have a theater games workshop. And we're going to do a little game with you right now. We just need a little bit of help. Uh, we are a three-headed monster, a three-headed storytelling monster. And the way it works is we don't know what's going to happen, and we just do it one word at a time. So, so usually you start with once upon a time there was a what? Mezzanine. A mezzanine? A mezzanine. Okay. Oh, a mezzanine. A mezzanine. We're in a mezzanine. Yeah. Well, I'm from Nashville County, too. I didn't know that word. Well, okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Once upon a time there was a mezzanine that was full of beautiful people who were starting to wonder if the were the the not they be if the if the be. if the if the because I have a word next the, the show <laughs> was over <laughs> soon <laughs> but Fortunately, it. Not your turn. Oh. <laughs> so what? Was it? Quite. Things tend to fall apart <laughs> with these games, but they're fun. Okay, you got the idea. That's all right. Let's right. just take a <laughs> Thank you for the most fancy word I've ever put in the game. Mezzanine. Yeah, mezzanine. Yeah. Gallery. Once upon a time, there was a gallery. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, here's another theater game, a little game we can play. We'll, we'll play all different kinds of games if you come to the theater game workshop. We'll play games when we get up, and maybe we'd have a small group, 
But there's, there's some that you can do with everyone like this in a big group. So here's one. Can everybody shake out your hands a little bit? I'm just going to shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out. There we go. And then two fists, nice and still. Good. And then shake them out again. Shake, shake, shake. And then two fists, nice and still. Shake, shake. Ooh, it's good fist is growing. That's really amazing. Shake, shake, shake. And then one fist. Keep the other one going. So now we're like getting a little tricky. And then switch. <laughs> then switch. Switch, switch. Don't watch these guys. <laughs> switch. And go like this. Okay, so now we're in a little, little, little theater game with mime. So we imagine that we're holding on to a stick, right? And you can move it up, you can move it down, you can turn it a little bit one way, turn it the other way. Don't let it stretch or bend or shrink. You can take one hand off and put it on a different place. Take the other one off and put it on a different place. If you take both off, it disappears. Right? Do right? so, so we can play a little game, like uh, an imagination game. What could this be? So, so here, they could be bow wires, right? Let's put the weights. What's another one it could be? Who has an idea that we could all do? You just call it out. Umbrella. Like imagine me. Umbrella. An umbrella. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got an umbrella. Put it up. You can put it up. And reach out. See if it's raining. Try another one. Just try one on your own. Try, try a couple. So we got an umbrella. And if you don't know what to do, what you can do is just play with the umbrella a little bit and see if it turns into something. You know? And you just like look around at it. Climbing a rope. Yeah, climbing a rope. Right. Climbing a rope. Climbing a rope. Right. And maybe one more. Who's got one? Another. What's one? What's that? Violin bow. A, a violin bow. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. So take that stick and just grab each end and put it into a really small thing like this. You can put it right in your pocket. Take it home. We can play this game anytime you want. <laughs> Mark, we put them away, Mark. <laughs> Country road, take me home. Wait, is memory lane where we belong? No, let's make new memories. Let's try new things. Let's take a chance and spread our wings. I am home. I am home. Wherever I am, I make myself at home. <laughs> You can add voice, singing, anything. So you know, put, put that back in your pocket, and you, there we go. Okay. And you, go. you make yourself at home, and that's what we do. We play, we, right? We play. We play. And uh, we, we play we with. play again. We play with what we're playing around with. And right now, we would like to <clears throat> end with one, one last piece. Um, you guys ready? Yeah. All right. I'm getting older all the time, just like a bottle of exceptional wine. All I do is get better with age. I'm never too old.
Just came downstairs to find what it is. I'm not clear. Send in the clouds. What's going on? Why am I here? Why am I here? Play, play, play. Come on, let's play. play, play. Oh, okay. yes, yes. Come on, let's play. Never too old. We're never too old to play. Let's do that one more time. We're never too old. We're never too old to play. Thank <laughs> you. 